Welcome to the inner room. For these Bible studies, we will follow a pattern or a ritual in order to save time and to focus in on God and His Word. First, please do start the video with your Bible open. The passage that we'll be covering in the video will be in the description and the title down below. We will start each video with a welcome and uh, with a reminder that we are here to meet with God. After that, we will open with a word of prayer. In this time of prayer, there will be a moment of confession. It will be silent. Please use that time to confess your sins and your failings to the Lord. If you need more time, please don't hesitate to hit that pause button. Then we will go into the Word of God. When we go into the Word of God, we are going to ask two questions. After reading, we will then ask the first question, which is, what is God saying? We will seek to say, what is this passage? What are the facts that God is communicating to us? Secondly, we will then ask, what is God saying to us? Now, you're going to want to have an open journal next to you or a pad of paper that you can write down things. And we are going to put down bullet points of things that God is saying. And then what is he saying to us? We're going to try to link some sort of application to it. For example, the passage where we get the name in our room comes from Matthew 6, 6. So let's do that together. It says, but you, when you pray, go into your inter inner room, close your door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's what this video and that's what these Bible studies are going to be about. First, we want to pray. And when we pray and spend time with the Lord, we want to do that in secret and in quiet, where we can have time to reflect. We won't have distractions, right? It says in a room. In the passage here, the context is about um, not, you know, being boastful. It's con contrasting that with the verse before where it's talking about hypocrites go out and say, look at me, look what I'm doing. So for you and me, we need to do this in secret. Now this uh, for me is not in secret, but hopefully uh, we can worship the Lord together. Secondly, the Lord who is in secret, that's why we want to go into secret in the first place, is because we want to be with the Lord. And so we want to be with him and he will see our prayers and our study of his word and he will reward us. That's why we come into secret is not just to earn brownie points with the Lord, but so that he will reward us with his presence and an understanding of his word. He will illuminate our minds. It, the Bible says that he will teach us with his Holy Spirit uh, all that we need to know, all that we need to remember. And that is the true promise of the inner room. We're starting in the book of John right after this, so let's jump right into it. Welcome to the inner room. Please place your cares, your worries, your fears, and even your ambitions outside the room. The promise of Matthew 6.6 6 says that when we pray, we should go into our inner room, we should close the door, and we should pray to the Father who is in secret, who will reward us openly. So put all those things outside the room and close the door. Whether that's physically, mentally, or emotionally, let's focus in on the Father who is here in secret. Let us pray. Lord, we confess our sins and our failings to you. Lord, please open our hearts and our minds to what you have to say to us today. Lord, please give us the strength to obey the things that you command us today. And Lord, we pray that you return quickly. Amen. We're in John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. As we start studying this passage, remember we're asking ourselves two questions. First, what is it saying? Secondly, what is God saying to us? We're going to seek facts that is presented here. And then we are going to attach each of those facts to an I should or application statement. Firstly, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Now, later in this passage, we're going to find out that Jesus is the word, right? That, that's who he's speaking of here. So in the beginning was Jesus. So it's saying that Jesus was at the beginning, that he is eternal. Secondly, it calls Jesus the word. So Jesus is the revelation. That's what he's talking about there. He's the revelation of God. The word of God, right? Which is Jesus. They're the same. Thirdly, it says, And the word was with God. So Jesus is in perfect relationship, perfect fellowship with God. But it says more, And the word was God. It's so not just he is in perfect relationship and fellowship with God, but he is also God. So that leads us to, to point five here, which is Jesus is equal yet separate from God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Now we're drawing our knowledge from some other parts of the Bible here, but Jesus is both God and yet he is with God. That clearly shows us that there is something happening here. So we want to keep that in mind. Let's keep reading. And he was in the beginning with God. So this, this is a partnership, right? Um, equal and separate from God. Verse 3. All things came into being through him, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. So he has created everything. That's six, is Jesus created everything. Seven, in Jesus is life. We find that uh, in verse four. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So that's just packed full of everything, right? In Jesus is life. In him is this meaning, this purpose, but life grows, this growth. And we're going to see in this book the resurrection. The things that are dead can be made alive. And it says this life was the light of men. So Jesus is life. And uh, number eight is going to be Jesus is light. He is revelation. Light exposes the darkness. There's hope. But there's also judgment. There is direction and there's righteousness. All these things are symbolized by the light. Once again, we're kind of drawing from other passages there. but uh, And also looking at the, the imagery here of w what he's talking about with light. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So number nine, in Jesus is no darkness. Number ten, Jesus shines in the darkness, or Jesus goes into the darkness. Jesus doesn't stay outside the darkness and wait for it to go away. Jesus goes into the darkness, which is what the whole Gospel of John is going to be about. Jesus is going to come down into earth. And, number 11, Jesus' ways are not understood by evil and those who are evil. 
Wow, that's a lot of points there. So we've got a lot to unpack here. So that's what, that's what this passage is saying, but let's not stop there. What is God saying to us through this? We want to attach I should statements to these. All right. Number one, Jesus is eternal and knows my past and future. So Jesus was in the beginning and is eternal. So he knows my past and my future. So let's try to put a I should statement there. I should trust him to know. He knows all things, so I should trust that he knows. But we're often tempted to, to believe that we know more than God, right? Um, God doesn't really understand my situation. God doesn't really understand what would be best in this situation. But I need to trust him in this. We need to trust him in this. Okay, number two. Jesus is the revelation of God. Okay? He reveals God to us. So, Jesus can tell me who God is and what is required of me. So, this one's an easy one. I should listen to Jesus, right? I should listen to what he has to say. And that's what we're doing, right? We're reading the words of Jesus so that we can understand uh, about God. Number three, Jesus is in perfect fellowship with God. So, uh, God is in relationship. So, I should seek good relationships with others. And I should seek a good relationship with God. Four, Jesus is God. Right? He's fully God. So, I should respect and worship Jesus, right? Um, he's God. So that's something I should do. And when I don't, I'm wrong, right? If I don't do that, I'm wrong. Number five, Jesus is equal yet separate from God the Father and the Holy Spirit, right? He is with God. Um, with that... Uh, I should, uh, I should understand what God says of himself. Uh, that's, that's a little bit harder of an application point there um, because it's telling us who God is. So um, I should seek to understand uh, who, who God says he is. Now, can any of us understand the Trinity? I still can't, but I'm seeking to. And I should seek to understand as best I can what God reveals about himself with the Trinity. Next, Jesus created me and everything, right? He created all things, all things that came into being. And did you come into being? I came into being. So we are created by Jesus. So we should obey him. He is our creator. So he has rights over us. We should do what he says. And next, uh, I should trust his power. If he created the whole world and the universe, I shouldn't question his power. I should believe and trust in his power. So far, we found that we should trust his knowledge, and now we should trust his power. Now, we haven't gotten into um, being explicitly told why we should trust him uh, for his, his uh, goodness towards us. But we'll get into that. So we don't want to go beyond what Scripture says. This whole walk through Scripture is, what does this passage say? Not does what does the whole Bible say. What does this passage say? We want to engage with this passage. And we want to apply this passage. Let's not jump ahead. Let's apply what God has to say to us here. He created everything. And then we see, in him was life. Okay, so Jesus is life. So uh, Jesus is the purpose of my life is kind of how I put that. So I should follow and worship him. Because in him is life. And so if I want to have a good life, if I want to have 
uh, life, I, I should follow and worship him. Um, the Westminster Catechism says, what is the purpose of, of man is to, um, to know, uh, to, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever, right? To glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So what we do should reflect well on God, should reveal to others God, how we live. And we should enjoy him. Enjoy his presence, this relationship that we have with God. That should be the focus of our life. So I should follow and worship him. I should come to him for forgiveness, because in him is life, and we have all sinned. We have all fallen short. We've all messed up our lives. We've messed up everyone else's lives around us, if we are honest about it. So how do we unbreak our brokenness? The only place we can do that is in Jesus. That's why we start these Bible studies with the prayer of confession, confessing our sins in order to seek forgiveness from Jesus. So, I should come to him for forgiveness. I should remember Jesus reveals and judges everything. So, light exposes darkness, right? Um, We need to... Re- realize that uh, that everything that we do will come with consequences. Even if we get away with something, I need to reveal that that uh, understand that that there is no secret. There is, you know, if if the Lord is here in secret to reward us for us seeking Him, He's there in secret when you think He's not there in order to reveal and to, and to bring punishment for wh- what has been done, consequences for what we've done. We've all done a lot in secret and tried to cover it up and pretend like we haven't sinned against God, and yet we have. He sees all. And when we saw that, that He is life, so we can find forgiveness in Him. Um... So that, that while we're talking about that light, right, that I should remember that God reveals and judges everything. Also with um, he is light is I should uh, put my hope in Jesus. He is righteous. He's, he's the only one that's good. And he, he provides this hope for us. You know, when you have the light out, you can see what you should do. You, you can understand how to... Uh, accomplish what you need to accomplish or to go where you want to go. And in this case, to be forgiven, Jesus reveals the path to salvation, which is him. Number nine, Jesus didn't sin. And Jesus doesn't tolerate sin. All right? The light shines in the darkness. That the light isn't darkness. The light doesn't have darkness. There is no darkness in light. I'm partially drawing on uh, over in 1 John where he uses the same analogy and says that there's no uh, darkness in him at all. So he doesn't tolerate sin. And so how do we apply that? I should not sin. I should not do anything that is against the nature of God, right? I should not pretend that Jesus is okay with sin because he's not. The sins that we do, the, the failings, the, the things that are wrong, Jesus isn't okay with. Jesus is light. There is no darkness in him. Jesus doesn't play in the darkness and, and he's not okay with darkness. He reveals the darkness. He exposes everything And he judges everything. But it also says here um, that Jesus shines in the darkness, right? And what is the purpose of that? It's to save sinners. Jesus, as we're going to see in this entire gospel, this, this story of Jesus, we're going to see him go into the world to come down here f- to save sinners. He's, he's going to say, I did not come for the righteous, but, but for the lost. 
I didn't come for the, the clean, but the dirty, of which, if we're honest, we all are. He didn't come for the perfect people. He came for the broken people. So the first step to being in right relationship with God the Father and Jesus is to admit that you are broken. Because otherwise, there isn't much to say. So, Jesus saves sinners. Sorry, let's put the application to that. I started preaching. I should find forgiveness in Jesus. And I should take his judgment seriously. He shines in the darkness as light. He exposes the darkness. He also um, brings that hope into the darkness. And number 11, Jesus is not understood, right? And the darkness did not comprehend it. Speaking of the light, which is Jesus, right? I should not expect to be understood, right? Um, I shouldn't. If, G if Jesus wasn't understood by the darkness and the world, why should I be understood? Number two, uh, the, wor the world doesn't understand God. Only God can teach me rightly. So where should I go to find out about God, about Jesus? I should go to Jesus because Jesus understands Jesus. The world does not understand Jesus. And I'm part of the world, so I need to go to his word, what Jesus has to say about God the Father and about Jesus. That's where I should find everything I need. If Do you have other things that you see in this passage? Put them in the comments down below. Always do that. If you have other applications, feel free to share those or just write them in your journal. Right uh, In the future, please do have a journal with you if you don't have that already so you can write down notes. Um, and uh, I will always type up all the bullet points uh, the findings in the description down below. God bless you all. Let's close in prayer. And feel free to hit that pause button at the end of the prayer and keep praying. Keep considering what God wants you to do today. Lord God, we, we praise you for Jesus, who is light, who is life. He was in the beginning he created all things that came into being. That he is, he was with you, and yet he was fully God. Help us to apply these things to our lives today. Help us to walk in this hope, and yet to take sin seriously. To take your judgment seriously. Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts more in these next moments, to understand how you would have us to walk differently, each one of us, today. We pray these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. I will see you guys tomorrow. We won't have the introduction tomorrow, but please do bring your Bibles and have your journal open and ready. And be ready to confess your sins silently or aloud. I can't hear you. And to meet with the God who is in the secret place with us tomorrow. God bless you all.